What is up everyone? My name is Bisectatron and I am the official CWL Premiere YouTuber and today we are recapping week one of CWL Premiere. Now this is my very first video uh, dealing with CWL Premiere, so be sure to let me know what you think in the comments, any improvements, anything like that you guys want to see uh, to these types of videos. But let's get into CWL. There are four different leagues for CWL. We have Invite, Premiere, Rising, and Light. I will be covering Premiere, but there are other YouTubers covering the other three, so be sure to check them out. I'll link them in the description. Within Premiere, there are two conferences. Each has 16 teams. There's the Gold Conference and the Elixir Conference for a total of 32 clans, 16 per conference. Let's just go through and take a look at who exactly is in this. I am not going to read off every clan right now, but if you do want to see exactly who's in it, you can go ahead and pause the video and take a look. I will talk about each clan at the end of the video when I talk about who won and who lost this week. But yeah, we will get to those overall uh, statistics and results uh, towards the end of this video. First, we're going to go through some very notable attacks and some notable wars and talk about uh, a little bit specifics here, starting with, as you can see, One Hive Genesis versus Terps win big. This was a very close war. My home clan, One Hive Genesis, I actually myself participated in this war uh, with Genesis and it was a very close one. This Town Hall 11 3 star by Terps coming at the end of the war. A pretty crazy finish. It was within just a few stars, last few seconds of battle day. Two Town Hall 11s for Genesis were attacking, one Town Hall 11 for Terps, and that is this uh, attack you're seeing on the screen right here by uh, Kakarot, I believe, possibly how it's said, uh, coming in in the very last moments of war. Getting a 3-star would have been enough to win the war, but the two Town Hall 11s for Genesis each came through, adding an additional star, and that resulted in Genesis pulling ahead 83-82. to But this attack, nonetheless, an awesome uh, Town Hall 11 3-star that we don't see a whole lot, but when we do, they are pretty awesome. Just coming at this base called the uh, Fort Trig is actually what it's coined by Trigaman. Coming at this base strong with witches, with bowlers, and just running through. It. Uh, not much of a chance to defend it. Perfect execution, good funneling, and you can see towards the end of the attack here he has multiple bowlers and multiple witches left up as long as along with his queen in the middle about to pop her ability and let her do some work on these last few defenses as well. Warden still up which is always important and not many defenses, just that Tesla and the Mortar, which will go down momentarily. So great war between One Hive Genesis and Terps win big. Once again, Genesis did pull this off just barely by one star, but both clans should look to be forces in CWL Premier as we continue into the next few weeks here. So that'll do it for this one. Let's go ahead and transition into our next war here that we're going to take a look at. And that one is going to be Forged from Steel versus, going to need some help here, I believe they might be German, uh, I'm going to say Leichtug. Now, that might be inaccurate. If I mispronounce anything in this video, just let me know in the comments. I want to keep this, you know, as professional as possible. So do let me know if I am mispronouncing a name of a player or a name of a clan. But anyway, a good war between these two also came down to one star. This one just a notable Town Hall 10 attack that took place by the victor forged from steel. Specifically, this is uh, Gooves getting the three star here to help out his clan. And this is a La Luna attack, very common for Town Hall 10. You can see has the queen come in, grab that Inferno, the king uh, walking in towards the queen, get her taken out. I believe he got uh, two air defenses as well. Now the top half of this base is poised to defend against air with all those wizard towers, expos, archer towers, very well set up for that. But he has a leg up on this base for sure, having gotten uh, the CC, well not an issue anyway, it's a Lava Hound, the, uh, an Inferno, two air defenses, and the Queen. So now he can come at this base with a big swarm of balloons, get that Inferno early, and what that allows him to do is drop that heal and not have to worry about the Inferno blocking it. So it gets great value for the heal, the Rage as well, uh, going to help out. Lava Hound's not doing a great job tanking because there's no air defenses for them to latch onto, but the spells are enough to keep the balloons up. They will fight through the space, and look at how many balloons are left up when everything is said and done. 
crush this base also has I think at least one lava hound in there some pups for cleanup some minions as well we will go ahead and fast forward towards the end here but anyway great war uh, forged from steel does get the upper hand 85 to 84 but both clans really performing well and they should also be some very uh, some very strong clans moving forward uh, as we continue into week two and beyond so let's go ahead and take a look at the next war here we have Invictus Prime versus Art of War. This next attack is going to be a Town Hall 10 attack as well. Also coming at it from the air here is Oz. Nice attack here and for this war, very close, 82-82. Came down the percentage, Invictus Prime getting the win here, but every last building was a was needed here to get that victory because the percentage was very close and the stars were tied so good job to both clans always a little bit unfortunate in my opinion when it comes down to percentage because both clans really getting the same amount of stars so it's just a very arbitrary um, who got those buildings on the town hall 11s typically on the town hall 11 two stars or if there are any town hall 10s left uh, who got the most percentage on the bases that weren't three starred so tough war for art of uh, war but they will look to bounce back in week two taking a look at this attack here by oz you can see just a little bit of a queen walk there kind of an all-purpose rage rages the wall breakers to help them in rages the queen gets the king in there a little bit just a nice value rage getting multiple things uh, there's the king to come in there doesn't get the defensive queen taken out quite yet but gets some of those buildings cleared out to help the queen she will step up nice touch with the wizard uh, to help take out the balloon and help with the lava hound he also drops in just a few minions uh, that speeds up the process for sure uh, for taking out those lava pups uh, the queen would now step up another rage to make sure she stays up and look at how he rages the queen up ahead of time to get the most value possible get the queen getting her damage up then when she steps up the healers get the benefit of that rage as well now here come the lava hounds for these air defenses a nice swarm of balloons haste at six o'clock and the next group of balloons kind of making its way in with more haste spells the queen is still doing fine and guess what still has her ability Right there, he's going to pop it. She'll get that entire part of the base taken out. And the freeze is money. Gets the Inferno, gets the Archer Tower, gets the Tesla. Now, the uh, Air Scally is always a bit of a nuisance. And there are quite a few of them. But the Pups will help with those. And the Queen as well. She is still up. Always nice having the Queen up. But doesn't even need her with all the cleanup troops he has at this point. So, great attack to Oz. Definitely was needed every attack every trash building and every attack pretty much uh, was needed to get this uh, Victory very narrow victory by Invictus Prime, but they pull it off So good job to them good job to both clans really and we will go ahead and move on and take a look at some Town Hall 9 attacks from some other wars Now speaking of wars that came down to percentage Crystal Warrior versus Quixotic Squad and this one also a tie war 84 84 came down to percentage again quixotic or quixotic rather my bad on that quixotic squad getting the win here by percentage but that being said crystal warrior not short of some awesome attacks they had plenty this is just one of their many a town hall nine a hog attack we'll take a look at just because it was very smooth in deployment you can see he encounters that test the squad or that test the farm <laughs> right away um, so that way he gets it taken out nice and early. The jump to let his heroes uh, and some of those wizards walk into the base. There is a hound in the CC that the queen will have to deal with. But sitting back in the rage, the level 30 queen can make pretty short work of that lava hound. Pops the king's ability in the base there. He'll step up, take out the queen. Uh, there goes the hound. The queen will have to deal with uh, some of those pups. But eventually she'll step up. Then just come in strong with the, hound, uh, with the hogs. Doesn't bring bowlers. Goes ahead and... Uh, brings a CC of max hogs. Uh, not something we see very often, but gets those hogs in early, which I like. Get those level seven hogs doing work the entire time. Let them uh, be the first hogs you send in there. Pops the queen's ability, she is still up. Uh, she might go down to this archer tower here, but she got some great value for him, uh, just for the small investment of that kill squad. And a few back end hogs, just like we see back end loons, Backhand hogs, very effective for tanking the wizard tower. They get it taken out, take some of the splash damage off the main group. Uh, so nice stuff there. Once again, good war. Quixotic getting the victory. Um, so very strong showing because Crystal Warrior is a well-known 
good clan and it's a good win for Quixotic. Tough loss for Crystal Warrior. They are uh, down to 0-1, of course, off the percentage differential, but they'll look to bounce back in week two. And uh, yeah, that'll do it for this attack. We have one more Town Hall 9 attack to look at and one more war specifically, then we'll get to the standings. So the final war here is going to be Dragon Rejects versus Pinoy Bandidos, I think is how you say it. And another good war. This one not quite as close as the last two. 85-81, uh, so a four-star differential. Dragon Rejects pulling off the win, uh, but good job to both clans, of course. You can see this is another Town Hall 9 Hog attack. That's going to be the focus for today, I suppose, uh, because Hogs have become a little more popular, at least from what I've seen in week one of CWL Premier. Uh, I think the HP buff, although very slight, uh, was a factor in this, as well as a few other uh, balancing changes we've seen recently. So taking a look at this next one, you can see he has the skeleton spell queued up actually, uh, but he'll go ahead and poison the defensive heroes as, as well as the CC troops, so great value for that poison. The level 6 dragon is a bit of a nuisance because it does not go down without a fight, but the queen eventually will pop the ability and she will finish off that dragon and then step up for some more defenses. Already starting in with the hogs, again, not seeing the bowlers in the CC. Um, it is still common of course, but this is another variation that utilizes those level 7 hogs. There they go, not sending them in initially, it's kind of the attacker's choice. Sometimes your first group of hogs might not do that well, so you want to make sure your level 7 hogs are in a group that's going to survive longer, but um, sometimes you want to start them earlier. In this case, he sends them in around the middle of the attack, a nice um, kind of preset deployment. You know you're going to have, uh, what is it, six hogs, so you don't have to tap out the number you want. You can just drop that CC. You know how many hogs are going in. So good stuff here has that last heal. The skelly spell not even needed. I think it was just kind of a utility uh, skeleton spell for where he needs it. Does hit a few giant bombs, which will uh, apply the brakes a little bit to the hogs, but they'll still power through this base and get the three star for him. We will fast forward as cleanup commences. Good job to Juggernaughty. Um, play on words there. Great stuff and a good war to both clans. Dragon Rejects definitely coming out strong and this was just one of their many attacks. Okay, so that'll do it for the attacks we're gonna take a look at in this video. Now we'll get to some of the actual standings and outcomes of all of these wars. Keep in mind there's two conferences each has 16 teams, and each one of those conferences is divided into four divisions of four clans each. The Gold Conference first, the Giant Division, Invictus Prime gets the win as you saw, 82-82 with percentage over Art of War. FYSB also getting the win, 84-80 over Dark Avengers. Sons of Anarchy does take the loss here, 82-84 against Dai Zabazis. And finally, Fortus L, uh, LTU also loses to Dark Looters X, score 81 to 84. Staying in the Gold Conference, moving to the Goblin Division, we are Spartans with a win. They win 85 to 84 over Three Point Park. Forged from Steel also getting the win 85 84. Over Laditch Tug. Again, I don't know if I'm sure, certain on how to say that name. Unfortunately, my apologies on that one. One Hive Genesis, as you saw, also winning 83 82 over Terps win big. A little bit ironic there. Not the big win for Terps, but maybe next week. And finally, Chosen Elite, only clan to lose in the Goblin Division. They lose to Marshall's Nation 81 81, uh, but the percentage was clearly in Marshall's Nation's fav uh, favor. Moving on to the next division, this is the Balloon Division, starting off Rogue XI getting the victory over Pigeonism, 84-82. to uh, The next one, Hindustan, gets the win over CZX Knights, 84-83. to Finland War also winning, 83-82 to over Valar de Harris, not sure on that one, but I believe that is somewhere around the pronunciation. Uh, so 83-82 there. And finally, the only clan to lose from this division, King Jeffrey, uh, suffers a loss to J-Off, 82-87. And finally, the last division within the Gold Conference, it's the Wizard Division, starting with Quantum 3 getting the win 85-83 over WHF2. 
Uh, Grumpy Old Men, also another clan to get the victory here. They win 84-79 over Emphatic Fury. Crystal Warrior does suffer a loss. It was 84-84, as you guys previously saw, to Quixotic Squad. And finally, Pinoy Bandidos does lose 81-85 to Dragon Rejects, as you guys also saw. So that does cover every war from this week because each team in the, or each clan rather, in the Gold Conference faced a clan in the Elixir Conference. So you heard every war, but we will still go through the Elixir Conference and just talk about who won. Uh, Dai Sabazis and Dark Looters X from the Dragon Division, both getting the win and pulling up front in Dragon Division within the Elixir Conference. In the next conference, the or the next division, the minor division, J off the only clan to win, so up to an advantage there, uh, being the only 1-0 clan in that division. Uh, the next division here is the healer division. Once again, just one clan to win, Marshall's Nation pulling ahead in that division. And finally, for the Elixir Conference, the uh, Wall Breaker division right here, Quixotic Squad and Dragon Rejects both getting the win. So you can see the Gold Conference in general won a little bit more than the Elixir Conference, but still pretty even distribution. Next week will be a little more complicated because I believe some clans play within their conference, some clans don't. So it'll be a little more complicated to go through it next week. But this week, very conveniently, it was a one-to-one. -one. Each Gold Conference clan played an Elixir Conference clan, and those were their results. As we wrap things up here, I am going to show finally, uh, feel free to pause this, it won't be up long. <clears throat> this is the Gold Conference total statistics, and up next we'll see the Elixir Conference. This just shows um, beyond the wins and losses percentage, stars for, stars against, differential, all kinds of averages, streaks, records within the conference, records from non-conference clans. Uh, this will get much more complicated as the season goes on, but if you can make this out on your screen, I did want to put this up for those of you who like the statistics. Uh, but anyway, that will do it for this video. Hope you guys liked the first official recap of the CWL Premier League. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, One Hive Gazette. If you're not a regular viewer, I will be posting my own private content on there as well as weekly content from CWL Premier. Recaps like these, let me know what you liked, let me know what you didn't. Uh, I should do this at least once a week to recap, but if you want to see uh, power rankings, projections, anything like that, I will also be sure to include some of those videos if that's what people want to see. So let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you guys for watching, and until my next video, I will sign off. Bisectatron out.